League of Legends has one of the most toxic communities in the entire gaming industry. That much is common knowledge. It's so prevalent that chances are every other match you play, there's always that one person who has anime protagonist syndrome and believes they're the only one who can summon Exodia and that everyone is trash beneath them, yada yada yada. Competitive games can get quite heated. Any video game community breeds a few special snowflakes here and there with bad attitudes and giant egos to mask their insecurities, but what is it about League of Legends that makes it everyone's go-to example of a game that destroys their faith in humanity? About a month ago, I brought up the topic of whether or not Riot should bring back the Tribunal, which is something a lot of players have been advocating for in light of how it seems like the League community is progressively getting worse and worse every year, with no signs of improvement. There are so many videos, tweets, and streams of top players and personalities voicing their grievances towards Riot, who continuously makes veiled excuses and empty promises towards handling the issue. The state of the community and the player base has gotten progressively worse over time, and I know this for a fact. I obviously don't work at Riot, I don't have the statistics, the numbers to back it up, but I think you can ask almost anyone and you know, you will get a resounding agreement that the player base has become more toxic, a lot more griefers, a lot more people just like straight up running it down, inting games, going AFK because, you know, someone annoyed them or whatever, even regardless of a reason. I think the game is unplayable, not because of the game itself, but because of the player base. Now we talked about this before, Riot has made posts that they're trying to fix it, I want to go over everything that I have major issues with that is just making this game so difficult to play on a daily basis, like in all honesty, it's just getting absolutely just ridiculous, uh, and the fact that Riot is just barely doing anything about her. They're just like, I'm so sick of this company. The trash! Fix the game! It sucks playing this And I'm fucking addicted! So I can't quit! Myself included, I find it almost inconceivable that it's been over a decade and Riot still doesn't have an effective and consistent way to punish disruptive player behavior. That's where this video comes in. Just a few days ago, I made a community post asking my viewers what they think the causality behind this deterioration of player behavior is, and I want to discuss my own thoughts about why League of Legends is so toxic. Before I begin, I want to clear up a potential misunderstanding. Even though it's hard to tell the difference, I truly believe 90% of players in League are not actually toxic people. We are human. Sometimes people have a bad game and get tilted out of their minds and spam GG FF15 jungle difference. It happens. Sometimes a person had a bad day at work and wanted to unwind by playing some League, which isn't a great idea in the first place, only to lash out that bottled up rage towards other people. Does that excuse their actions? No. But I think it's important to acknowledge that no one is a saint. Everyone has bad days, everyone has a breaking point. But there's a huge difference between a person getting upset at their jungler for missing smite than someone blatantly trying to lose a game because you're all trash, stay hard, stuck, kek w. It's not black and white, some infractions are worse than others. Anyway, onto the problems. First and foremost, even though League of Legends is objectively an amazing game in concept, as in the gameplay premise, the mechanics and whatnot, that's also where it kind of backfires on itself. Unlike other competitive games, League of Legends is team-based. It sets 5 players against 5 other players. But unlike other team games, where one person can easily solo carry a game boost skill alone, League requires everyone to work together because no matter how fed a champion is, they can't actually 1v9, it's just statistically impossible. 4 abilities and a passive mathematically will lose to 20 abilities and 5 passives just through sheer base values, cooldowns, etc. This means, players have no choice but to trust and help each other to achieve victory. The vast majority of games are won because all 5 players collaborate in unison to accomplish a win condition. Conversely, that means all it takes is one person to decide either to not cooperate or intentionally sabotage the team in order to lose the game, which is also known as griefing. As it currently stands, the game places too much reliance on everyone doing well together and not individuals stepping up and carrying the team. I'm a strong believer in the 40-40-20 rule, that is, 40% of games are guaranteed wins, 40% of games are guaranteed losses, and 20% of games are decided by you. Theoretically, it makes sense. Since there are 5 players, the most you can ever contribute is 20%. You just have to hope the rest of your team can cover the remaining 80. Half the time they do, half the time they don't. That's partly why 95% of all accounts have between 40 to 60% win rates, even in Challenger. No matter how bad a player is, they will usually just stay around 50%. Even though a 60% win rate is more than enough to climb, it still means 40% of your games will be hopeless losses, regardless of how perfectly you play. 
The fact that a player can only do so much can be extremely frustrating. We as humans value control. We like it when we have agency in something, when we have the ability to change the outcome of something, not just in video games, but in all facets of life. Finance, relationships, ambition, education, etc. Control equals stability, and stability reduces stress. League is a very stressful game because there's not that much personal agency a player has from match to match. Even 80% win rate duo smurfs or Master Yi Terra Gold Funnel duos still have to trust in their remaining 3 teammates to at least hold their own. That frustration can often lead to flame or toxicity. Adding on to that, what little control an individual has can be wrestled from them before they can even exercise it. The reason so many people say FF15, the moment their team loses the first river skirmish, is because oftentimes that's all the enemy team needs to steamroll over yours. League has reached such an early game focused state that any mistake you make is punished tenfold, not just in your lane but against everyone else, which further emphasizes the first problem, where all it takes is one person on your team messing up to potentially destroy any hope you have of winning. Not all the time, it's season 11 and people still do Baron throws, but nowadays you see 10k gold leads by 20 minutes whereas back in season 3, 4, 5, and 6, you would only really see 5 or 6k at best. Top lane for instance is the most snowball-y it's ever been. Getting solo killed even once means you could lose a minion wave and 2 tower plates. Now all of a sudden you're down 600 gold, 2 levels, and your jungler abandons you because you're a lost cause. Ever since the solo lane XP change, top laners have the fastest leveling rate out of all roles. That's why by the time ADC and supports reach level 11, top laners might already be level 14. What this means is that losing minion experience can be that much more penalizing because even one wave can set you back a full level. Levels matter way more than kills. The average gold value gained in terms of base stats and abilities is about 580. This means if you're down 2 levels, you're down well over a grand, and that's not considering the extra gold they have from CS lead and kills. Jungle is the same thing. You get double crabbed or counter jungled, boom you officially lost dragon and rift herald priority and likely will be down 2 levels for the rest of the game. Everything else becomes exceedingly more difficult, because the enemy jungler is now so far ahead of you that they can probably steal all your camps too, which worsens your disadvantage. And then of course, as jungle means you have to deal with the mental pressure of your teammates flaming jungle diff. A kill or two in mid lane may not exactly doom your chances of survival 1v1, but if the enemy laner is someone with high roaming pressure like Pantheon, Talon, Katarina, or Twisted Fate, they're more than likely going to snowball their lead elsewhere. And lastly the bot lane. Even though bot lane has the lowest experience scaling, two champions gain an advantage. If you score a double kill or two, your bard, Leona, or Alistar can pick up Moby boots and roam around the map. ADC struggle the hardest with coming back because many of them generally have poor mid games, since they don't have a high enough crit chance to consistently push out their DPS. That becomes even less possible when you're entering 20 minutes with only Kraken Slayer and boots. There are so many ways any person on either team can mess up that triggers a downward spiral to defeat. It's much harder for you to come back from behind than it is to get an early lead and keep it. Because unlike fighting games, getting killed means the enemy comes back even stronger than you, which makes it more difficult. Problem 3. Let's be real, I guarantee 99% of people won't admit it, but almost everyone in League of Legends, myself included, has an overinflated opinion of themselves as players. We see it all the time. 2000 Games Hardstuck Diamond 4 talking trash to another 2000 Games Hardstuck Diamond 4, despite being in the exact same elo. I talked about this a little in the Tribunal video where everyone believes they're better than their peers, which leads to a clash of egos. Thinking you're challenger and that you know more about the game than everyone else is a recipe for disaster when you come across another person with that exact same attitude. Moreover, players regard their own mistakes a lot less critically than their teammates. If your bot lane gets double killed, that can tilt you right away. But if you get solo killed in top lane, you might think, it's fine, I can get over it. This especially happens for mistakes in the late game. If your support gets picked off while trying to ward, that might tick you off a lot. But when you get caught out, you don't think it's that big of a deal, even if your death resulted in the enemy team securing Baron. Almost everyone thinks like this, unconsciously. Not necessarily due to arrogance, rather, it's a lot harder to be introspective than it is to shift blame. The moment people lose a game, their first instinct is to think about what their teammates did wrong rather than what they did wrong, even though that's the only thing they can control. I'm not saying all people, but most people, it's a coping mechanism. Speaking of egos, in any roster based competitive game, there's a philosophy that whatever character you play is more than just a colorful avatar, it's an extension of the self. People who play support might enjoy being team players, or those who main fighters love the feeling of being this Hulk and Vulcan raid boss. Or Zoe means. 
I don't know what that might be an indication of, but moving on. Because champions in League tend to inspire stereotypes, most specifically in player performance and behavior, that can also give rise to a toxic atmosphere. For example, Yumi players might get accused of being low effort, low skill, cheese abuser, room temperature IQ, things like that. The most problematic instance of character stereotyping, I think, is that of Enchanter supports. League players can be very sexist at times, and target Enchanter support means with even remotely feminine sounding names, calling them e-girls and stuff like that. But I think that sort of champion prejudice is more a result of social gatekeeping than League of Legends in particular, but it still is a contributing factor to the overall toxicity of a game. In many cases, players are associated with the champions they play, which can lead to personal grudges such as Riven mains hating Renekton mains for playing a brain dead easy champion. Continuing on, currently the report and punishment systems are practically non-existent. The only automated player discipline mechanism that works consistently is the chat moderator. Usually if a person says key red flags or flames in chat by saying like the n-word or telling a person to delete system 32 in real life or using slurs, they get hit with a chat restriction. That's the most common punishment you see today. What about other infractions like intentional feeding or win trading or griefing? There are countless records of people calling out accounts that intend feed 20 games in a row and still receive no punishment. The issue is that it's really difficult to actually tell the difference between a person who is tilted or bad at the game and a person soft in tank. Machine algorithms aren't advanced to notice whether or not a person is win trading because they can play just competently enough to not trigger any flags. Obviously if someone buys Moby boots and runs it down mid, that's really easy to notice. But what about your 116 teammate who's still trying to do their best? I know it's a meme at this point, but he or she could just genuinely be having a bad game. If I were to play devil's advocate, in Riot's defense, it's not exactly a good idea to assume guilt on players for having an unlucky match. If they decide to be more aggressive in their actions, it could lead to many false positives and a lot of innocent players banned. Remember, ego runs rampant in this community. People report each other left and right for super petty reasons sometimes, like refusing to give blue buff or accidentally getting caught out. Those are not bannable offenses no matter how many games a player loses because of them. I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt because, again, even though there are blatant cases of win trading, inting, or trolling like that Twitter screenshot I showed you earlier, the rest of the several hundreds of thousands of cases per day are stuck in a gray area. There's no real blanket statement solution to figure this part out. All the same, Riot has to do something because the longer they take to lay down the law on these issues, the more it instigates a domino effect. What's happening right now is that the trolls, inters, and win traders are ruining games for everyone with no consequence. They get away scot-free. Maybe one or two get banned here and there, but the other several tens of thousands of players just queue up again. This makes the victims, the rest of the community, incredibly frustrated, which then shortens a lot of players' fuses. All that pent-up stress and anger reaches a breaking point and they usually lash out in chat. They flame their jungler for missing smite, they flame their AD carry for getting caught out for the seventh time. They flame, flame, flame because they need to vent. But then they get punished for flaming, rightfully so. Technically, it doesn't matter how upset or frustrated or justified a person is, flaming is never the answer. In an ideal world, that would be the case, but again, we're human. There's a limit to a human being's patience, and League of Legends does a really good job at pushing it to the very limit. They get chat restricted, which means they can't vent their frustrations anymore, so what's the only solution? To take it out through their actions, to AFK in the fountain, to troll games, etc. It's a negative feedback loop where one troll makes two trolls, which then makes four trolls, so on and so forth. And lastly, this is another minor point, but I still think it's worth talking about. For a lot of players, especially in solo queue, and I'm unfortunately guilty of this as well, winning is fun. Even if it was a hard-fought battle and the enemy team was just slightly better, losing doesn't feel good. A lot of players want to climb. Progress is what brings gratification. Losing LP means losing progress, which means it feels like you just wasted so much time. League of Legends is first and foremost a game, and usually you're supposed to have fun playing games, but it can be really hard to smile and laugh when you spend 40 minutes on a single match and lose it. Consequently, that does result in a lot of sore losers. It's not one specific factor that answers why League has such a toxic community. It's an amalgamation of all of them. Sadly, I have a feeling it's only going to get worse. I'm normally an optimistic person, but when it comes to the League community, I don't think anything can be done to fix this, at least overnight. Even if Riot cracked down really hard on disruptive behavior and banned all the trolls and inters, they could just make new accounts and continue on about their business. Out of all the problems I listed, the only thing that I think would cause actual lasting change on the player base would be problem 2, making the game feel less snowball-y because that would mean both sides have a chance to stage a comeback even with a rough start. 
But aside from that, the other five problems are more human psychology than anything else, so that's not their prerogative. Anyway, the video is getting kind of long so I'll leave it here. If you enjoyed this video, a rating would be much appreciated, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subbing to the channel. Also check out the description down below for links to my Discord and social media, as well as a playlist containing all my discussion videos if you'd like to watch more. But that's it for today, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.